Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We're glad that you're able to join us today. Uh, for those of the, you who are joining us for the first time and, and don't really know who we are, we're, uh, my name is Kelty. And I'm Stan. And we're with Back to Nature Apparel and Photography. Uh, we're wildlife photographers, and we're located in uh, just outside Water Valley, about an hour northwest of Calgary. And uh, we're bringing this here to you today to share a little bit of helping you get back and reconnect with nature. So just a few little uh, uh, rules here and suggestions that we're going to share with you just to kind of help you get acquainted. Um, we are running on satellite, so we do have a bit of a delay. So we ask you to be patient with us and uh, changing of some of our screens and whatnot. Um, we're gonna, at the end of our presentation today, we'll be having a question and answer session. And uh, so therefore, if you have any questions along the way, just as the arrow indicates there, um, just feel, click on the Q&A at the bottom and type in your questions. And then like you said, we'll answer them at the end of the, the presentation here. We also uh, invite you to participate and Put in any comments that you might have. Uh, there is a chat room button at the bottom there again. Uh, you can type in anything and just to make sure we're, uh, you can hear us and everything, let us know that you're able to see and hear us okay. Just type that into the chat room there if you don't mind. Ah, yes, I'm getting some good comments that people can hear us, so sounds good, wonderful. Good, good, good. Yep. Great, great. At least we're working. Good today, so. <laughs> yeah, yeah, glad. Glad you can join us. Great. Great to have you out here with us today. You bet. And uh, also, just as I uh, mentioned here, we have chat room rules. Let's just keep the chat room just for uh, uh, interacting with us today and our guests. And uh, yeah, we'll just continue on. Yeah, so we just asked no good. soliciting. So in the, in the chat room there. Yeah. Um, but actually, if you wouldn't mind, just take a moment here. I'm kind of curious where everybody is from. So maybe type in where about you're coming from so that we have an idea of just who all is joining us here today. Water Valley. Oh, Water Valley. Bergen. We have neighbors in Bergen. Vancouver, oh. Innisfail, Camrose, Rich. Richmond. Good, good, good. Lots of people coming over. That's good. Sundry. Ah, from the Kootenays in BC. BC. Oh, Vancouver again. Or Jawson. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, cool. thank you very much for sharing that with us. Yeah, no, that that is great. We uh, love to be able to see where everybody's coming from. Oh, and Red Deer. Hey, that's our hometown. Yeah, old turf. <laughs> yeah, you bet. Stomping Calgary. Drums. Yeah. Um. So all the comments should be showing up in the chat room if you're typing in the chat room, whereas if you're in the Q&A, those comments won't show up in the chat room. So make sure if it's if it's a comment, it goes in the comment section and the Q&A goes in the question ones there. Yeah. Okay. okay, so uh, anyhow, we just want to share, share a little bit with you about, uh, again, some more information about who we are here at our Back to Nature Photography and Apparel. Um, we, uh, we tend to be what we call our, our snoopa dreamaholics. Um, and how did that start, Stan? Oh, well, we start, when we started dating in Red Deer, we were walking through a park one day and we were talking about going to the creamery in, in the, it's that little town outside of Innisfail. Um, I can't think of the name of the place right now. Gone off the top of my head. Anyway, we went out there and we found that we both like snooping and uh, both love dreaming. That's why we love photography too so much. Yeah, exactly. And so it's, uh, it's led us on a few adventures, that's for sure. Um, in the top there, it kind of shows you, you know, not everything we do is, is, is uh, luxury top notch. And so sometimes if you want to get out and photograph those uh, unique opportunities, you kind of have to be patient. And so uh, that particular case, we actually uh, sleep in the back of our vehicle occasionally now and then. So that was a particular uh, day that we went out last year. We were out uh, looking for wild horses. And um, if you want to know anything about wild horses, you'll have to be sure to contact our presenter today because uh, Audrey is definitely very well rehearsed with those, those beauties. So this was uh, one particular uh, day we went out and uh, stayed overnight. And you know, we got there and it was just an amazing day. We seen like about 
60 wildies and it was just gorgeous. There was colts and there was wildflowers. So we stayed overnight and uh, we got up the next day and not a horse to be seen. And we drove for miles and miles, nothing. So she skipped part of the story about how we got out of the car this morning. You don't get on like you're a 20 year old. <laughs> the yeah. old joints weren't moving very good. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It, is, it is a little different nowadays, yeah. but uh, it, it sure was fun. And then for me, up in uh, Churchill when we were up there, everybody else was all looking at the uh, tundra and checking out the mosses and lichens and stuff. And here I am, I'm underneath it, checking out the drive shafts and the leaf springs and transmission and motor and everything else. And then one other time when Haley went to the washroom on the bathroom on these tundra buggies. Haley is the driver. Haley is the driver, and she went to the washroom. And I jumped in the driver's seat and she came back and I looked at her and says, I know the answer is going to be no, but could I drive this? <laughs> Just like a little five-year-old kid. I love big toys. And no, he did not get to drive. No. <laughs> <laughs> Safer for everybody. And But sometimes we uh, travel in our RV, so we, uh, we have a small motorhome that we take out and we venture out and get out in those kind of uh, ways so that we can get out and do some exploring. And then the other one is when we were up out at uh, Spirit Bears and we used to take a boat every morning for an hour or more out to the locations where we did our bear watching. So we'd have to get in the boat. It's all inside a cab so it's nice and dry and warm in there and jump in and away you go. It's a good boat ride. We used to see lots of humpback whales going back and forth. We used to be had a good experience with humpback whales once out there. Oh yeah, those, those kind of trips are amazing because you see more than just what you're going for. If you're lucky and, and we were very blessed that's for sure we uh, had an amazing experience so uh anyhow we just wanted to share with you our poll results that we've been doing for the last couple of days um we didn't have time there yesterday but we just kind of wanted to recap so it's kind of interesting to see uh, what comes out of that um anyhow on, on the first day we asked whereabouts you live and uh, of course there we had our, our city country and other so over half the people are from the city so it's nice to know that we're able to connect with you and help bring a little bit of nature to you as well and then of course our country folks well we all love our nature and uh, yeah love it that you can look out the windows and if you're lucky you're going to see something walking down the lane and others well I'm not quite sure what others means but I thought maybe perhaps there might be some people that live in their RVs or whatever um, is there anybody out there that can elaborate on what maybe other was for them you can type that in the chat room we'd love to hear and uh, so what do you currently use to capture images of nature and uh, this was kind of this was interesting um, camera phones 58 percent so uh, Audrey our uh, presenter today she'll be happy to hear that because she's going to be sharing with you like I said information about uh, getting out and uh, using your camera phone um, DSLRs are at 24 percent so that's an interesting percentage, and 5% is the other, and um, I'm not sure what the other one is on that one. Tablets. Um, and oh, well, yes, right. Tablets. Tablets, yeah, exactly. There is that. A lot of people are using them. iPads and whatever they are. And then we asked, too, which of the activities you do in nature. So as you can see, um, hiking's at 37, photography's at 27, biking's at 10%, with yoga at 7, and camping and RVing at 19%. So. It's good to see that people are getting out and doing what they can to get out there and, and reconnect with nature and not being able to get out for the last couple of months. I'm sure we're pre all pretty anxious to, to be able to do that here again. Then yesterday, um, with our poll that we put out there yesterday, we asked how many people um, know first aid? Well, interestingly, 43% did. So that was reassuring. That's really good. Yeah, it is. And uh, it's something I know even myself, I always have to, um, you know, remember to go and renew my first aid because things do change. We do both have to. We have both have to do that, yes. Yeah, that was a good reminder. Reminder. Check um, your first aid kits too, so. Yeah, and 19% so, and know they didn't know first aid. And the other 38% uh, said occasionally. So I guess occasionally means they must know some first aid. Um, do you carry any kind of emergency equipment with you? Well, 81% said yes, which was awesome. And 19% said no, which I'm sure maybe, uh, maybe some of them will be changing their thoughts after yesterday's presentation. And are you interested in knowing more about safety, wilderness safety? 95% said yes, and that was fantastic to hear because you can never know too much. And uh, you, know, you may always think it's never gonna happen to you, but boy, I'll tell you, you want to be prepared if it does. Well, when we were on our spirit bear trip where uh, one of the other uh, people one of the, who was along with us, they slipped on the rocks and cut one of their fingers open. And our guides all have to have first aid and BC first aid. 
and they have they carry a first aid kit so they were able to take care of the guy right there and that's what you know you never know when it's going to happen yeah. yeah and amazingly that guy was a doctor yeah. <laughs> <laughs> happens to anybody like you said eh? so today as we mentioned uh audrey's going to be coming on here shortly and she's going to teach you about how you can utilize your your camera phone while you're out in nature she's going to give you some fun and practical uh, applications with that Oops, I jumped ahead one too many. Way too many. Okay, okay. <laughs> sorry, button slipped there. So anyhow, um, today we're going to have uh, Audrey Van Aken and her partner Rob Stratton is going to join you from Mountain View Photography Services. Uh, just a little bit about them. Um, they own and operate uh, Mountain View Photography Services in Water Valley. They're full-time photo and print studio offering courses, workshops, photo tours, and the popular photography adventure retreats. They have many years of experience trekking across the countryside in search of great photo opportunities. For the most part, Audrey and Rob are self-taught photographers who are always experimenting, learning, and trying to expand their horizons. Sounds just like us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. They're part of our little community out here called Water Valley, so yeah. Okay. We do like to stick together out here. Okay, so just bear with me for a moment here. We're just going to do some adjusting here and we're going to bring them on. A few more seconds here, we'll have her all running. Okay, and okay, so Audrey, you should be, we should be able to, to hear you and your video, your video on. can you turn your video on? There we go. Yep, just a bit, just a bit of a delay there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Stop sharing. Okay. Ah, there, there we go. go. Hello, folks. Hi <laughs> <laughs> there. I've never seen any of these things, eh? <laughs> we thought learning photography was the hardest thing we'd have to do. <laughs> oh, gosh. That was easy compared to this stuff. This <laughs> well, you guys have done really well at getting the curve. <laughs> yep, yep, we're all in this together. You betcha. There you go. So anyhow, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn you over to uh, to be in the host here, Audrey, so that you and okay. uh, Bob can continue on Probably with your presentation. Okay. That okay. Takes a minute. Gotta love satellite, eh? Mm. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff. Mm -hmm. No technical oh. again. Okay, just a second here. <laughs> Oh, interesting. <laughs> Hold on a minute here. Well, I just seem to have lost my controls here. Okay, Simmer, I know you're on board with us. <laughs> I'm just trying to bring up a, a control bar. You get so many screens open here.
we lost our tool bar. Try your tool again. Don't let me bring it up. Oh, there we are. Oh, it's a move. <laughs> it changed screens. <laughs> it jumped to our second screen. Oh, technology. You gotta love it. Anyhow, okay. So, um, stop share. Okay, I don't want to share. So, can you share on your end, Audrey? Can you go in to share your screen? Nope. It says the host has disabled um, ent attendees from sharing. Okay, mm -hmm. let me just try here. Um, Here's the show button. That's what you're missing. There. Okay. There's no toolbar. I'm not sure that's what you've got. No. No. I'm not sharing right now. Okay. We're sharing still. Oh, here. Let's try this. Follow your instructions. Can't even do that. Just follow your instructions. Okay. I'm trying to get here. Um, okay. I'm going to go back here to Audrey's for a minute here. Okay, stop. Ah. Now let's see. Okay, are you able to share now? Now you make a host. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, let's see. It should be. Oh. Now, okay, I'm going to make you the host now. I think I found it. Okay. Ah, there I found it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Let's, let's just hope this all works now. Yeah. Now, can you hear us? Yeah. Okay, good. Mm. Okay, so we are Audrey and Rob from Mountain View Photographic Services. Stan and Kelty have invited us to be a guest speaker here to talk a little bit about iPhone photography. And obviously from the poll that was run the other day, the majority of us like to use our phone to take pictures. Obviously in outdoor activities, it's a little bit easier to take it along with you. In the photography world, there is a saying that the best camera is the one that you have with you. So for all the camera gear that we have, doesn't do us any good if it's sitting at home on our desk or on the floor in the office or left in a vehicle. Phone is the one thing that we have with us most of the time, therefore it makes probably the best camera as well. So just a couple things, Rob wants to talk a little bit about a video that we shot. We thought it would be easier to teach this as a video instead of live, partly because there's so much that we need to cover. We're just touching upon it. Everything that we're talking about is specifically dealing with an iPhone, but understand that if you're dealing with a different type of phone, most of those th same things are still applicable. It'll just be a matter of finding it in a different menu as opposed to how we're showing it to you. But phones are sophisticated. They all pretty much do the same thing as far as the camera functions go. So we recorded this little snip for you guys to watch. If there's any questions, if you wait until the end, we'll deal with those at the Q&A. It just makes it a little bit easier. The video should run more smoothly if we play it from start to finish all the way through. So. Obviously, as you can tell, it's me that's doing most of the presenting in the video. Rob would have been the guy behind the scenes doing all the important stuff, like making sure that I'm in frame and all that good stuff, which is part of the whole photography thing, right? So did you want to add anything? Uh, no, I don't think so. We've uh, dropped the resolution way down and done uh, three or four test runs here. We're, we've come into Calgary today to, uh, to share from Calgary. So, uh, we'll, so we've got a good uh, connection on our end. And hopefully it's going to play smoothly uh, through the whole system. So that's about all. Okay, we're going to start this video and then we'll catch up with everybody again at the end of the video for the Q&A. Okay.
Audrey, I don't know if there's any sound playing. No, we're not getting any sound there, Audrey. Just a sec. Let me just start that again because I think. No, just go for But I didn't do the share with the optimum. Let me try this a different way. This we had this problem earlier. No problem. We're all learning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, this should work better. And that would be where you're going and how to tell people that that's where you are. So there's a few apps that you can get. You can GPS a few locations for your hikes. And if you just hold the volume button, as well as the power button. You take a screenshot of that and now you can share that with your friends and family so at least they know where you are. The other nice thing about it is now you've got this photo on your phone so you can follow the map right here as you're going. If you've got a paper map, fantastic, you can do the same thing. Take a picture of it. Now you don't have to lug this big map around with you. You've got that image on your phone so you can follow along as you're walking. When you're out and about and you've got your phone with you, you'd like to take pictures for the sake of taking pictures. The most important thing is a clean lens. So make sure that after you've taken it out of your backpack or your pocket, you take a second to wipe off that camera lens so that the image that you're taking isn't going to have a lot of that granola bar and backpack scuzz in there from being packed around. If you decide that you need to take a picture really quickly, the fastest way is to simply from your home screen, slide to the left and there you've got your camera function. What we like to do when we're on the trail is take pictures of interesting flowers or perhaps bugs. You can identify them while you're there, or if you don't have Wi-Fi service, you can identify them when you get home. There's plenty of apps that you can load onto your phone that'll do that, that for you. So here's some interesting flowers that we want to take a picture of. I'm going to come down nice and low to take that picture. But now it might not be easy for me to hit the normal shutter button to take this picture. So it might be easier for me to hit the volume control button, which is another way that you can activate your shutter off of your phone. Now I've got this picture. When I get home or right now, I can put it in the app and find out what kind of flower that is. Another way that you can use your shutter is to take the headset that came with your phone, plug it in, and then from your camera screen, again, you can use the volume control button off of this to take the same picture. That means you don't have to stand on your head to get that good image. We found this very interesting stump on our walk today. So a couple of things that this one is going to help us to demonstrate. For one thing, um, all of the cameras have a digital zoom and you access that simply by dragging the two corners together. You're going to end up with a slider bar across the bottom that allows you to zoom in and zoom back out again. In order to make this a nice picture, we want to make sure that our exposure and our focus is set where we want to set it, not where the camera decides to do that. Same thing, anywhere where you touch on your screen, you will end up with a little box with a little sunshine beside it. We want to tell the camera that we want to focus on this stump. That's where we're going to set our focus. Now your focus is locked or your focus is adjusted to that. If you want to lock your focus, just simply press and hold. You'll see AE. AF lock appear on the top of your screen. That means auto focus and auto exposure is now locked on that image. So if something were to come through the frame, your auto lock will automatically stay locked on this particular image that you've set it on, as well as your exposure. To adjust your exposure, you will get a box that has a sunshine on it. Anywhere on your screen, just slide up, increases the exposure, sliding back down again, decreases the exposure, and you can set it to however you want it. And as soon as you've got it the way you like it, go ahead and take your picture. So we were able to pick up this really cool little iPhone tripod. You can see the advantage of it. We are on the least of the ideal 
bases to be able to take this picture from so we've got the legs splayed out all over the place but it is holding the phone very still and it works really well two ways that we can take this picture again just to press the normal shutter release or on this one you might want to hit the volume button to take that picture conversely we talked about this bag of rice that we've been carrying along with us here's your instant tripod in case you wanted to take a picture you just prop up your camera in that bag of rice take your picture the other nice thing about it is if your camera should happen to get wet while you're out on the trail you can just pop it back in that same bag of rice and it will take out the moisture and hopefully you won't damage your camera I guess in the worst case scenario if you get hungry you've always got rice to eat it doesn't take up a lot of space and it has three purposes all in one think of these next few segments I thought it would be easier if I just shared my screen with you than have it recorded what we're looking at here is pano which would be the opportunity to have a larger landscape all in one picture. So we're just gonna hit record. You'll see that there's a white arrow and a yellow line. And if you can keep the white arrow on the yellow line as you move across your image, you will see that it's actually sort of threading all of the information together to make one large photo. The trick is to keep the arrow on the yellow line, move in a nice slow fashion, until you get to the end of, I guess, wherever your frame would be. We're gonna go right to the end of the garden here on this one. And then you hit end of record. I would take a look at that image and there's your panel. So if you're out in the mountains or a great big huge prairie full of wildflowers or something like that, that's a great little trick to do. With the magic of technology, they have given you some effects that you can apply to images and make them look like video. First of all, you'll see that at the very top of the screen, there's a button that's yellow with little circles around it. It now says live off. If you touch that and live is turned on, what it does is it records a split second of video prior to the beginning of your image and at the end of your image. And let me show you what that can do for you. So there you go, you can see I'm just on photo. I've just taken a regular photo. And when you look at it in the edit preview, it looks like just a photo. However, if you swipe up on the image, you will see that these effects show up at the bottom. One of them is loop. So again, this is a still image that we have, but when you apply loop to it, look what happens. It literally continues to loop the information over and over again, so it looks like a video but it is still just the same, the same still motion. One of the other cool ones is called Bounce, and it basically goes forward and reverse. So you can see the water comes away from the waterfall, and then it goes back to the waterfall. And probably my very favorite and most used one is this one called Long Exposure. Now again, these will only work if you apply them to a live picture, but you can see what it's done to that live picture is it's blurred out the motion of the water, the same as we would do with our DSLR on a long exposure. That's also, those effects can be applied to pictures that you already have in any of your photo albums as long as it was recorded in live to start with. Here's another picture that's actually in my library. You can see this is the before picture and this is once the long exposure has been applied to it. Just a cool little technique, I think. It kind of adds a little bit of pizzazz to some of your pictures. Here's one more picture that I have in my photo library. You'll see it's obviously not the same waterfall. It's a larger waterfall. This is the before picture. We're going to go ahead and do the long exposure effect on it. And again, you can see how it's rippling out that water, keeping everything else in the foreground and the background perfectly focused still. So works really well for waterfalls. Kind of a cool thing if you're out on the trail, makes it look like you carried your big camera along with you, but you didn't have to. You can do it all inside your phone. One thing to remember whenever you're applying any of these effects to an image that you have or one that you're taking is it does change the data of the image. If you wanted to go ahead and print these images, there might not be a good enough quality there anymore to print them very large. Best to check with your printer um, or check with my partner. He's our printing expert and he has done many, many, many prints of um, iPhone photos that have been taken. Perfect. We've given you the rundown on how to do a couple of great pictures with your iPhone. Now let's take a look at some very basic editing tools. Now, 
Most of these run on a slider bar system, the same as anybody who's done any work in Lightroom or Photoshop. Realize that on your phone, these are the basic edits that come with your phone. You can download apps such as Photoshop Express, which gives you significantly more options as far as editing, but these are just the basic ones. In the top right hand corner, you're going to see the edit button. So we're going to touch that and you're going to get a bunch more stuff that shows up at the bottom. This little magic wand is your automatic. So when you touch that, it's basically the camera thinking that this is how this image would be optimum. It will adjust some of the exposures for you and that's about all it'll do. Then if you work your way down, you've got exposure, brilliance, highlights, shadows, contrast, brightness, black point. These all, like I said, work on a slider system. You can move them back and forth to see how the image changes and you can get it to the way you would like it to be. You can increase the saturation, you can decrease the saturation. You can deal with your vibrance, you can add some warmth to it or not, you can add some tint to it or not, you can add some sharpness to it or not, you can do noise reduction. If you've done a bunch of edits and you don't like it, you just need to hit cancel, discharge your, discard your changes, and it'll go back to the original again. When you've got the original and there's on the very, very bottom again, there is three overlapping circles. That's going to give you some overlays that you can use, filters, um, everything from a vivid. And again, work your way through these. You can go right all the way down to black and white or various tones of black and white as well. Then you can save that image um, as an image unto itself, or you can, ex you can replace the original image. The last button on the left on the right hand side is the crop button, crop and straighten. So if you're thinking that maybe you don't want this much of the pot or this much of the sky in, you can just change that. And we're gonna call that done and there's the new image. And if you go back to your photo roll at the bottom, there's the original and there's the changes that we made. Again, just a very quick, brief overview of editing. There are so many more things that you can do with this, and that is probably a two-day course unto itself on how to edit, file, file management, all of your, um, your images off of your phone. We get asked all the time if you can actually print from an iPhone, and the truth is, yes, you can. This is an image that was shot actually through a window one morning at sunrise, and it now is the largest piece of art that we have in the house. This is the original image. We had it printed. This is not a great lighting on this picture right here. We had it printed like this, so it actually takes up the fair portion of our back porch. So yes, you can print an iPhone photo. Yes, there are things that you need to consideration. Again, the effects that you add to an image in camera will change the quality of the image that you have. If you're not sure if the, the picture that you have could be printed, please contact us. Rob is our print and guru here at Mountain View Photographic Services. He will take a look at the image. He can tell you if it's going to be print worthy or not. And he can actually up it a little bit through Photoshop and make some adjustments to it that might make it a little bit better print quality than it would be any other way. So yes, you can print from an iPhone photo. One of the things we haven't talked about yet is video. Obviously, yes, you can also record video off of your phone. That's an entire new segment all by itself. But one of the cool little features that I did want to show you is the slow motion video. And what it does is it records your video and then gives you a segment of your recording in the middle that it pulls a bunch of the frames out of it and makes it slow motion. So here's a very quick demonstration of what that looks like. There you go, you'll see that was just a very short little recording and when we go back to the preview and we run that, you can see how nicely it slows down those frames in the middle and makes it look like a slow motion video. As you can tell, there's a lot to learn with an iPhone camera. Just as any camera, it's going to take practice. It's going to take you going out and using it on a regular basis, and you'll learn a little bit every time you do that. We've just barely scratched the surface of what these phones are capable of doing, and with new advancements in phones coming out every day, these cameras just get more and more and more sophisticated. The newer phones come with dual cameras. You have a portrait mode that actually simulates a bokeh in the background. We don't have that on all of the phones. We do have the option on some phones also to add aftermarket lenses that can give you a zoom or a macro, which means that your photography just becomes that much more interesting again. 
A thing to note is the difference between these lenses, the zoom that you get from a lens that's attached is an optical zoom. The zoom that you get in your camera is a digital zoom. That's two different things and it will result in a different quality of work both ways. So we've touched upon just about everything that we need to talk about. Yes, you can print off of an iPhone. Yes, you can also run video off of an iPhone. If you've got any questions, if there's something that we haven't covered, please feel free to give us a call. You can reach us at mountainviewphotographic at gmail.com or check out our website, www.mountainviewphotographicservices.com. And I'd like to just thank Stan and Kelty at Back to Nature for allowing us to come and be a guest speaker with you. And I hope you all get a chance to go out and enjoy some nature. Wonderful. Thank you. That Thank was you. awesome information. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So are you able to make me uh, over to the host again? Um, sure. Can you tell me how to do that? Okay. If you go up to my name, uh, do you see our name? Uh, go to the participants panel at the bottom. That bar. Yeah. Okay. If you click on participants, you'll see our name. Yes. Okay. And if you just go to the, I believe there's a more button that's on the side of it. Or even just click on our name and it'll ask. Click beside the um, name. There you go. Okay. And you have a red dot, so I'm assuming that means you are now the host. You betcha. That is it. Thank you. So I'm, I'm just going to mute you for now and then we'll finish our presentation. So thank you, uh, Roger and Ob. That was, that was great. A lot of information. You just missed the one point. Don't keep your finger in front of the lens. <laughs> 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 That's my problem all the time. Okay. Yeah. So back into my screen share here. Okay. Here we are again. And we are off and running again. So um, what we're going to do right now is we've got a little poll that we're going to be uh, putting out there for you. We're going to share that here so that uh, you can help us out again today on some questions that we have. Um, I'm just going to launch the poll, if you wouldn't mind, just taking a few minutes here to answer some of these questions because it, it helps us too to know what you're interested in, what maybe we can help you with in the future as well. No, sure, a lot of good information. Well, I learned a lot. I, I'm not ever, I don't use the camera phone very much. I'm the big DSL guy, so. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I like, I like using my, uh, my phone too because it's, like I said, it's convenient, it's easy to take along and uh, sometimes that's just all you need, but it's nice to see that, like Audrey showed you, you can take some pretty awesome photos and still print them, even from your from your camera phone. Well, they are much lighter than a 15-pound camera and tripod <laughs> pack, and they're going for eight hours. Yeah, so, that's that's true. Yeah, yeah, there's a difference here. So I'm gonna end the poll here in about another uh, five seconds. So if you haven't been able to get your answers in, if you wouldn't mind just letting us know, that would be great, and then we'll share that. Those results with you tomorrow. Okay. There we go. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Yes, thank you. That was great. So anyhow, we just wanted to share with you too that we've got some uh, exciting news to share with you at the end of the week here. So you want to make sure you stay tuned on Friday. We've got a big announcement that we're going to be making. Um, and with that, we're going to uh, just kind of tell you a little bit uh, tomorrow. Uh, we've got an exciting guest coming on. So if you enjoy some nature themed getaways, you certainly want to be joining us tomorrow as Christine Booker from Travel Booker Adventures is going to share some great suggestions on how to start planning that next adventure. And if the picture is any indication of what she's going to be talking about, you certainly won't want to miss it. And if you enjoyed today, please share with everybody. And uh, the more people we can get out and help, the better it'll be. So uh, share it out to all your friends and family. And let's all get out and enjoy a little bit of nature. 
So again, as our thanks to you, as we mentioned in the last couple of days, uh, we have a virtual travel pack that we're going to be offering there on set on Friday. And uh, Audrey ha and Rob have also contributed to that. So like I said, you want to be sure that you can stick around for that because you're certainly going to enjoy the information that's in there. I've, I've been seeing it coming in and it's, it's pretty amazing. It's, uh, it's pretty valuable information that uh, we're very grateful that everybody's been contributing to. So right now we're gonna we're gonna do our Q and A, and uh, I'm just gonna go over some of the questions here. Um, let me just, yeah, I'm gonna unmute uh, Audrey and Rob so that they can answer some of these questions. Okay, let's see here. So is your audio on there, Audrey? I think so. Can you hear us? Well, we can hear you. I, can I can't you, see yeah. you. Oh, yeah, yeah, we right. can. You're good. Okay. okay. <laughs> we are good to go. Boy, just give us a DSL, no problem, eh? <laughs> Anyhow, um, so yeah, we did have a couple questions. Um, somebody was asking, is it possible that an iPhone version does not have a live feature? Yes. Not all. Yes, depending. Depending on the version of iPhone that you have, yes, definitely. The older versions didn't have that. Okay. I think we didn't start live till about uh, the iPhone 6 series, I believe. Uh -huh. Ah, okay, gotcha. So, um, and also you used an iPhone. So an Android is, is somewhat different then. A lot of them are going to be able to do the same thing. It's just a matter of how you manipulate it to get to the same menu, right? Nikon, Canon, same thing. They do the same thing. You've just got to know how to get there. Right. And if all else fails, Google it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Google has done that. Um, I know you talked in one point there, you talked about the black point. What is the black point that you're referring to? What does that do in the settings? Um, it's going to be the same as if you're doing any editing with Photoshop Lightroom. The black in the image, you have the ability to independently move the amount of that within the picture, I guess, is the easiest way to describe that. Do you have a more technical explanation? No, for that? that's reasonably simple. Yeah, it's, it's just uh, you telling, adjusting uh, within the image where you're um, determining absolute black is. Right. So that your, makes any sense. your exposure button changes the overall exposure. So the lightness and darkness of the entire image, the black point will deal with very specifically just the black. Then you can also independently change your highlights and your shadows, which again is a whole other, a whole new ball. I don't believe they've got highlights. Oh, do they have a highlight and shadow? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Well, that's pretty awesome. And I don't know why they've not. They allow you to uh, adjust your black point on the phone, but they haven't graduated to adjusting white point on the phone. <laughs> so. That was my next question. So yeah, it makes you wonder, right? I'm, I'm sure as technology advances, um, I mean, we've even seen a lot of, like you said, iPhones and Androids replacing the point and shoot. So the technology just seems to get better and better. So Audrey, are yeah. you talking raw or just JPEG? When you're taking- uh, we get, We'll get a JPEG image. Okay. from the phone so you can just do so much in the editing of them before you start distorting them. yeah you're pretty limited the same as you are with lightroom in a, in a jpeg image unfortunately but i do believe I'm, I'm not positive on this but i believe one of those new huawei phones is allowing you to shoot uh camera phone raw files but i'm not 100 percent certain on that but no, eventually that yes rob you're right i i have a huawei and I bought it for that reason, and it does shoot raw. But to be honest, we haven't really done any manipulating with it. And, and for those that don't really understand the difference between raw and JPEG, it, as far as photography, um, well, I'll let, Audrey, I'll let you kind of explain briefly what the distant difference is in that. Because that's his, his department. <laughs> I'll pass the block. <laughs> well, a JPEG is a, it's a compressed, polished up, uh, file format that uh, basically, again, you're allowing your camera or your software to do what they think is the best job. And, and to keep the file size down, they basically lock some doors 
they don't allow you to get in and manipulate a lot of the raw data that you can in a raw file. So it's like, uh, it's kind of like looking in the window at a, at a museum, but you can't actually get in and touch and, and adjust everything. Whereas uh, as Stan and Kelty know, and anybody else that's done any, any slight amount even of image manipulation, if you've got your raw files, you've just got infinitely more control over a lot more components in that picture. Yeah, I think with my DSL, I, it's a 5D Mark IV. And I believe it's 38 megapixels I got, 38, something like that. It's a lot. Where the JPEG yeah, is only like 16 or something. So it's yeah. quite a bit different. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, lo love your museum analogy. That's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so uh, any other questions? Is there any other questions out there? Um, so, something I wanted to make a comment, and I don't know if uh, I've never had an iPhone, but I know when I had an Android, which I really enjoyed about it, is that I could change my um, shutter application so that I could do it by voice command. Can you do that with the iPhone? No, not to my knowledge. No, I, there may be an app that you can uh, download on the phone and allow you to do it, but I don't believe there's anything native in the operating system for it. Right, yeah, and and where I found that really helpful is if you're in a situation where you've got, like you said, we were, I think it was at a zoo, and I could take my phone and I could just slide it through the bars and I could tell it to shoot and they would take a picture and I didn't even have to touch it. So it, it, that was yeah. that was a big plus for the Android. So, so for anybody who has Androids out there, I sorry, I don't remember how to get to that setting right off, but if you Google it, it it's a pretty uh, unique and... Um, actually a pretty handy tool to be able to use when you're, you're needing it and don't have fingers to, to push the buttons. Well, it's nice when you're doing a picture of a selfie or with, or with my wife here, <laughs> and you can set it up on a tripod and you say, shoot, and take the picture. You don't have to run back and get in it. Put it on timer. You do sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Well, you can use, um, on these phones, you can use the headphones and plug them in and use the volume control on your headphone. So it's kind of like a cabled shutter release that you can use, um, or there's a self timer option if you want to get in and do the selfies that way also. And if you want to have just yourself with the mountains in the background, you have the option to flip your camera around so it's taking a picture of, from the front of your phone versus the back of your phone. So now it's shooting you with whatever is behind you and you don't have to play with turning your phone around. Right, right, exactly. So yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great idea too. Um, and uh, as far as um, videos, I, I know for me, like especially doing slow motion videos, um, I, I played around with it, which is something we always recommend people do too, is that um, I found that you certainly don't want to be doing it for a very long period of time because your um, 10 second or 15 second uh, slow motion video ends up being double or triple that. So yeah, you don't need a lot of time to record a slow motion video um, because again, it's just gonna extend that time that much longer. And you wanna be careful with any sound that you're filming during a slow motion because the audio and the visual gets put into slow motion. So if you wanna hear your voice really slowly, then go ahead and shoot that in slow motion. But something with a waterfall, you're not gonna notice it that much, but if there's any sound, if there's music playing in the background or anything, that'll definitely be noticeable when you go to slow motion. Good point, that's exactly true. I was out photographing something one day and uh, I think it was some bees or something like that and there was some sound going on and when I played back my slow motion, I thought there was a cougar <laughs> or something growling behind me. I just, I it, basically the hair came up on the back of my neck and I, had to look around like, where did that come from? So yeah, good point on that one. Um, so when you're recording video, you can do it either uh, portrait, which is up and down, or vertically as a landscape. That works either yes. way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. The only thing that won't work is when you're doing your pano shot, you have to hold your phone in portrait mode to be able to do a pano shot. It will not allow you to do that in landscape mode. Okay, gotcha. Oh. Somebody asked, is there any way you can enhance how I look in a photo? <laughs> what do you answer well, that? <laughs> <probably not. laughs> well, yeah. they do have those other, um, those ones where you get the, the other faces and all that stuff. What are those oh, the goofy ones, ones, yeah, oh, the, the kids use them, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, but sometimes black and white too, just in itself is amazing what it can do for, for uh, you know, helping pictures and stuff like that. And I know a lot of a lot of teenagers and stuff enjoy the black and white shout, 
shoots too. So something you can take in mind when you're uh, looking for some creative ideas. And angle and perspective, um, shooting from a higher angle, shooting from a lower angle, you can make something look distorted intentionally or not by just changing your perspective as with other photography as well. And compression is something that you don't get the option of very much with an iPhone until you get into the ones that have the dual cameras where you want to have the same um, compression that you would if you're shooting with a long lens. You can, it's hard to simulate that with a phone unless you move your subject away from the background and manually put them at a different distance. Mm -hmm. um, I have a couple more questions I see coming up. Uh, somebody asked, often I get two versions of the same picture. One has HD on it. What is the better picture to keep and what is HDR? HDR is a high dynamic range. It's basically going to take all of the highs and lows and meld them together into, um, again, what the camera thinks is the best high definition version of that. I just had that today. I was looking at my picture saying, how come I have two of all of these? It'll save the original and it'll give you the high definition version of it. Um, HDR is just one of the buttons that will show up at the top of your camera screen. If you push it, it'll turn it off or on. And I guess whichever one that you want to keep is entirely up to you as the photographer, whichever version of it you like the best. So does it give you three files, like one in uh, dark light, one in medium, and one in bright light, and then it gives you the fourth one, which is the final. Is that how it works? No, it, uh, it doesn't do a true HDR like like we do with our DSLRs where you take three or five bracketed images. Okay. It just basically, it looks at the original image and then it tries to make the best version of the highlights, low lights, and the regular exposure and then just creates one single HDR of that. Yeah, okay. Right, so. and, and I, I find when, when I do oh. HDR is like, if I'm in a situation where I'm getting a lot of uh, shade and sunlight all in the same picture, like you're trying to take a picture of something, HDR is really good at often basically yeah. balancing out that bright and darkness. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And you can, when you touch the screen and you get your, um, your autofocus and your exposure, that's all linked together in one point on your phone. So you can adjust that up and down if you push your finger on the area of the photo image that you would like to have in focus, that's where your adjustment for your um, exposure is as well. So some of your highlights and your lowlights, you can expose, you can change the exposure on your image to kind of um, compensate for that a little bit. And then also then the HDR, that's just another level of the same. Yeah, somebody else, else often uh, mentioned that they often use it for uh, taking anything with skies with clouds and stuff like that because you're going to get more definition with that. Um, yeah, absolutely. So and someone else asked if you could please repeat the information on the app at the beginning of the video that you talked about. Oh, on the plant identification. Oh, there's, yes. so we have on our phone, um, you want to go out and you want to find out, oh, wow, was that poison ivy or what is this really cool plant? There are apps, I believe, I mean, I'm not sure there's a whole bunch of them. I think the one that I have on my phone is called Plant Snap. And you literally just take a picture of the leaf of the plant and it'll run it through the database and then it will tell you what that plant is. If anybody's interested in plant identification, I'm sure there's another one that would be the same for bugs or whatever. And it might be helpful if you down the road, if you're hiking in shorts and then you go home that day and you've got a little bit of a rash on your legs and you're not sure what it was. If you were crawling around and happened to be taking pictures of a plant and it's poison ivy, I think that's pretty much, that's going to tell you what it was right there. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, Tanya told us yesterday about those three leaves to leave them alone, right? Exactly. Yeah, uh, yeah for sure. Um, someone mentioned think, uh, yeah, that they're having, sure. oh, sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I believe there's a lot of different apps out there now. There's apps where you can uh, um, record a, a bird call and it'll run it through the database and tell you what kind of bird it is. And right. I suppose there's one cougars and bears and such as well, but I would hope you'd know that by now. Um, <laughs> I think also for footprints, if there's a footprint yeah, and you're trying to identify yeah. the footprint, whether it's a fox or a whatever, if you take a picture of it, it'll do the same thing. I don't know what that app is called, but there's a bunch of apps out there. Basically, if you need to know something, there's an app for that. Well, yeah, good. just ask Google, right? Yeah. Great. 
-hmm. Okay. Um, la also, someone had mentioned that they're having trouble copying pasting live photos. Is there a process for that? Uh, copy and pasting within a text or send trying to send it to somebody sharing it that way? Well, I think she's just referring, having taken live photos, they themselves, she's having trouble copying and pasting them. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know that, that, I think sometimes if you are, if you've recorded a photo in live, it has that split section of video before and after it. If you're trying to send that as a text to someone, whose phone does not have that same technology, that might be a bit of a problem. I've not run into that myself, but no, I've not I can look into that. If they want to contact us later, we'll look into that and see if we can help them out with that. Okay. Gotcha. Oh, I see Tanya is on call with us too. She mentioned iNaturalist is a good app to use when you want to do some identification. Great. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, Last one here, somebody asked, are there any tips using panel? I can't seem to keep the arrow in the middle. <laughs> Practice. <laughs> Part of it will be how you hold your phone, the same as when you hold your camera. The more stable that you are with your elbows and your wrists kind of locked into your body, that will give you a smoother, um, a smoother flow. And it really just comes down to doing it over and over and over again. Make sure you breathe, make sure you're not um, sw swatting at mosquitoes, that sort of thing. Start with, uh, before you actually start taking the panel, figure out what you want to have in the, in the final frame. Position yourself in the middle of what that shot's going to be, and then move over to the left and pan to the right. Because inevitably, when you first start doing it, you start panning on the left, and by the time you get over to the right-hand side of the frame, you're just all twisted up like a pretzel. So. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, no, that one too. So, yeah, yeah, good good advice. That's right. Exactly. It takes a little practice, and, and it's just like everything. We, uh, we have to practice to get better. So, I think that's about it. Uh, if anybody else has any more questions? I think that's... One of the things that we touched upon at the very, very beginning, and I'm not sure that's before we got the audio and video part figured out, um, probably an unconventional use of the camera that's on the phone is to take a picture of either the trail markers when you start your trail or a GPS location that you're going to be hiking in or the map that you're taking with you. Text that or email that to friends. Just saying I'm going hiking in Kananaskis is pretty vague and they would have no idea where to start looking for you if they needed to. The other thing, and I think Tanya touched upon it again yesterday as well, when you start a hike at eight o'clock in the morning and you're headed in a direction, by the time you're finished your hike and you're coming back again hours later, all of those landmarks look a little bit different and you're coming at them from a different direction. If there's a trail that splits in two different directions, it's a good idea to take a picture of it from both angles so that when you're coming back again, you know, did I turn right? Did I turn left? Did I go down this trail? Did I didn't? And a few hours of difference in lighting and a few hours of, um, of difference in your own physical exertion level, coupled with the fact that you're coming at it from a different angle can get you lost in an awful hurry when you're out there. Isn't that the truth? You don't need to have a Wi-Fi signal to be able to take the pictures on your phone, it will store them on your phone. You just need to be able to have some type of an internet or Wi-Fi signal if you wanted to share that information with somebody. Yeah, exactly. And Tanya put into the chat room there um, some more information on uh, about 19 apps that will turn you into a wilderness expert. There's a, a website that you can go oh. through. So it's www.mnn.com, Earth Matters, Animal Stories, 19 apps that will turn you into a wilderness expert. So thank you, Tanya, for sharing that. Yeah. Well, I think that's about it, folks. We're uh, just about wrapped up here on time. And we want to, once again, thank everybody for joining us. And thank you to uh, uh, Audrey and Rob for sharing your information. I'm, I'm sure you helped out a lot of people. I know we ourselves have learned some new tips from you, and we sure appreciate uh, you coming along and sharing that with us. Um, it was a pleasure. Thank you for having us. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. And uh, like I said, be sure to come back tomorrow and join us as we uh, continue on and share some uh, an interesting uh, Arctic uh, safari is what's happening. So we'll look forward to seeing you back here tomorrow, folks. Have a great day and take care. Bye for now. Bye for now.